Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Myra, and I know you guys have long been awaiting this video. I couldn't figure out a way to put in all the information that I feel like I wanted to tell you and that you guys should be aware of. So some of the things that I left out, like sanding and prepping a cup, um, epoxying, are things that I felt like I could do without. Um, in order to provide more of the tips and tricks that have, have, have actually helped me. So I've made multiple mistakes with hydro dipping. So I wanted to start off the video by saying that if you're someone who's just afraid to mess up or afraid to waste product, don't be because I feel like I truly think that that's the way that we learn is through our mistakes. So number one important thing for me is to tell you guys to do your research on PPE. I was wearing mine when epoxying and doing all of that, which is why I don't film myself because I can't talk anyway. Um, so just make sure that when you're spray painting, it's in a well ventilated area. If not, the smell is going to stay. If it's a closed room or like your garage, make sure that it's open um, so that you have that air flowing through. Also, I really wanted to go through and let you know that in the first Two vid or the first the first two hydro dips that I am going to show you guys I did not list the colors that I used because I just didn't wasn't allowed that time within the video however they'll be everything will be listed down in the description so for my first two dips I actually ended up making this one it was for a custom order and this one so this one has a white glittered base coat and it's epo it's been epoxy twice already so this one was ready for hydro dipping this one i had prepped my cup and then sanded did all that good stuff and spray painted it white using rust-oleum's flat white so this one as soon as i dipped it there was no cleaning up there was no nothing that was it it was done it was ready to be sealed and epoxy with that being said for sealers you can you have two options you can use rust-oleum two times um clear gloss spray if you have it you have countercultures quick coat you can also use that as well i use whatever i have if i'm out of quick coat and i haven't already placed an order for some i'm just going to use rust-oleum two times clear gloss if i have it but that i tend to run out of very quickly so everything you need if you really want to know the colors that i use or you want to recreate with those colors everything's going to be in the description i will i want i also wanted to say that in order for hydro dipping to work best it is i highly recommend for you to use all gloss so you have satins you have ultra matte you have matte you have gloss um high gloss gloss or high gloss will work best if you use matte or satin they tend to dry quicker and will possibly clump up like they're known for doing that in the video i am using a satin which i end up showing you i just know that it kind of goes really fast but when in doubt if you have any questions please just leave them in the comments below and i'm more than happy to answer them because i do anticipate questions just in case i, I felt like it wasn't as long as i wanted it to be but I also overcomplicate things, so I didn't want to include information that you really didn't need. So anyway, I really hope you guys enjoy the video. I Hydro dipping is my favorite form of creating cups. I love it. It's my favorite method, probably because you get something different every time. And also because I feel like I really struggled with it, but I also really worked hard to get better at it. I love it. It's my favorite one, and I cannot wait to see what you guys think. To get started, I'm gonna use a total of three tumblers. I'm gonna show you how to dip a solid colored glitter tumbler like this one, and then a solid white base painted tumbler, and a glitter swirled tumbler. So the ones I have glitter have already been epoxied, and all of my paints, I try to use as many gloss paints as I have. If you use a satin like this one, this, per this French lilac, just make sure that it's not at a time when it's very windy outside because it will dry so much quicker and those are the paints that tend to clump the most 
is the satins, the flats, and the metallics. So you just have to make sure that you're mindful when you do start this process that although you do have to be in a well ventilated area, if you can wait so that it's not so windy outside or whatever, that's gonna work best for you. For all of my dips, I do like to start with a white base in the water. And then from then on out, every single color that I now pick up and spray, I will spray aiming at the inner rim of the bucket. This will cause my paints as I'm layering them on to kind of swirl and move towards the middle of the bucket. I also do spray very, very close to the water, almost using the inner bucket where there is no water as like a shield to create a cell-like form and texture within the water. And I personally love how that looks on a cup. And also I don't, I'm not very good at man-made swirls with a toothpick or whatever. And I really don't have time for that either. So this is what I have found works best is spraying towards the inner rims of the bucket and allowing the water to move the paints towards the middle. So with that, the key here and what you have to keep in mind is that when you do dip, if you dip the way I'm doing it here, which is I'm gonna be taking the cup and dipping it right in the middle of this bucket, that's the focus, the middle. That's why this works for me and this method has worked for me because when I spray towards the rims, everything moves to the middle. Another thing to keep in mind is like you see here when I'm dipping, I continuously keep moving the cup towards the right. I am right-handed. And once I'm like submerged in the water, I literally push the water and pull the tumbler out really quickly. I really don't have any clumped paint except for this one spot that I'm showing you now, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off once I start working on that part of this cup. For now, we're just gonna let this dry for at least 45 minutes. We don't want to start removing paint until this is completely dry. Besides that, I really don't have a system to, okay, I'm gonna spray each color two or three times. I, I really don't know how many times I end up spraying it. I focus on what the middle looks like. Once I'm happy with the middle, I leave it alone and then continue to dip because you also don't wanna be sitting there spraying for so long because they will end up drying. I'm gonna continue on to the next cup. Like I said, this has just been base painted white, flat white. So I'm gonna clean up the water in the bucket by taking just a paper napkin and literally lightly just scooping the surface of the water to remove the paint. Because I am using the same colors, I'm not gonna be too worried if there is some residue left. I'm gonna, that's why I spray that white layer on first so that whatever's in there can get caught onto that white. So, for this cup, I'm gonna begin with white again, aiming at the inner rim of the bucket because I want everything to be pushed towards the middle. You can still spray in the middle. I just, that's not the focus of when I spray. I spray towards the inner rims first. Here, I was having a little bit of trouble with the nozzle. It was, I think I bumped it or dropped it, but it wasn't working correctly and I just moved on um, because I didn't want to have to waste all that paint by trying to fix it. So I just gave up on that color and continued with the colors that I did have. In this part, I was purposely trying to break up some of that metallic because I didn't want it to clump on the cup. So I do spray whatever color I have there to just separate it. And then taking my cup at an angle in the middle, twisting it and try to push the water as you're coming back out. This one's gonna stay just as is. I'm gonna seal it and then epoxy it because it's just on a white base. For our next and final dip, I am going to try to remove as much of the paint as possible. And in fact, I actually let it dry and then come back and wipe it once more because the colors that I'm gonna be using next are not purple, they're orange. So I'm gonna try to take off as much left over residue of paint as I can. And whatever I don't, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna start with a white base. So the colors I'm gonna be using for this orange hydro dip are gonna be the gold metallic, the real orange in gloss, and a white in gloss, and they're all by Rust-Oleum as well. So once again, I'm spraying in the inner rims and layering the colors as I want. This cup is orange and even a little coral, 
with white. So I really wanted to create sort of a contrast, but with similar colors, which is why I pick my paints this way. You don't have to, it's really up to you. I've sometimes ended up picking pink colors that don't go well together and that's okay. Just wipe it with acetone and start over. This is where you can really see what I mean by pushing the water with your tumbler when it's submerged because you can see how much the water is moving afterwards. Um, the reason I do that is to try to get any of the other colors that are maybe in there to not grab onto the cup. And on this specific tumbler, I had clumpy paint but i loved like the other side of the cup so i'm not going to start over i'm just going to show you sort of how i fix it so we're going to start working on the first one we did which is this purple hydro dip i just start by taking a damp paper towel to remove any of the excess water that might still be on the cup however the paint is dry so i'm going to go ahead and start removing the parts that i don't want on there just with some acetone in a handkerchief or a cloth works as well. You just don't want to use, in my, at least in my opinion, paper towels because you get the leftover residue from the paper towels. All right, so before I get started, I really wanted to try to show you as much as I could the parts of the cup like this where it almost looks translucent and you can see through the spray paint and you can actually kind of make the glitter out from the bottom. That is where you want to remove the paint from because it looks like a film. So I'm gonna remove the areas that are very film-like on this cup. And I will say that out of the entire process, this is probably what takes me the longest because I do take my time. And I highly recommend that you do and start removing slowly um, and not that much all at once because if you remove way too much, you may just have to start over and redip again. And I would hate for you to have to do that. So remove a little bit at a time. I kind of just gauge and look at my cup. I spend a lot of time doing this until I feel like I'm happy with it really important that you do this part right after your cup is finished drying. I would not recommend leaving this to dry for a whole day or even hours because that paint, if you do end up having clumps of paint on your cup that you don't want, it's going to be so much harder to take those off. If you don't trust yourself and you think you're going to remove way too much at a time, start with 91% alcohol. Sometimes I will do that if it's very difficult, like I want to remove a little bit, but I love the entirety of the cup, so I'm afraid to mess it up. I will start with 91% alcohol. You may need to use a little bit of more elbow grease because it is alcohol and not acetone. However, it is way more forgiving um, and chances of you ruining the cup are less likely. So I will highly recommend you use 91% alcohol if you're just not there yet or you just don't trust yourself enough yet. But I will say that at the end of the day, I have messed a ton of these up. So don't stress out about it. If you do mess it up, just know that it's just a cup and you can start over. Grab a cloth, grab some acetone, wipe the whole thing down, let it dry for about 20, 30 minutes, and then you can redip it. I'm just gonna continue wiping this off until I get it to where I love it. Then I'm gonna stop and move on to work on the orange one and then we're gonna seal them and then we'll epoxy them. And this is what it looks like before I apply my layer of sealer and then epoxy. I love it. And I'm gonna put purple butterflies, so I can't wait to see the end look of this. I'll show you guys at the end. All 
All right, so for this cup, I was really torn at the beginning because I didn't like how my metallic clumped with white, which that will happen, but I decided that it was worth saving. So I'm just gonna show you what I do to remove those stubborn areas. And it's the same thing as if you were removing that transparent film. However, instead of acetone, this is the one that I'm actually gonna use 91% alcohol because I don't trust myself. And I don't wanna remove some of the cool areas on the cup. So taking a small amount of 91% alcohol, I'm gonna start with the areas that have that thin layer of film and begin removing around there. Be careful because normally, say I wasn't using any metallic paints on this cup, you would essentially be able to clean up the cup just using the alcohol because it won't remove the paint unless you like vigorously rub it. However, with metallics, they're very easy to be wiped off. So that's something I learned the hard way. At this point, I went ahead and moved on to my acetone because the alcohol just wasn't doing it anymore. I was having to rub way too much and I just didn't want to take the wrong paint and the wrong areas off. So now I'm going back to my acetone and cleaning up the areas where the paint was sort of clumpy. And you can't really tell um, or make that out in the video, but I really do enjoy removing the areas where I want my glitter to peek through as well. So I'm not sure if you can kind of tell what I'm doing, but I'm following this gold accent line that's kind of wavy and curvy, and I'm creating like whatever I'm removing, I'm also doing it in a curvy or wavy pattern as well. So instead of removing this entire area of clumpy paint, I kind of just work through and around it. I remove the drips because it's very obvious that it's clumpy. So I'll remove the drips, but I won't exactly remove all of the paint in the area. I completely forgot to film the part where I apply my sealer and then epoxy my first layer. So just now I didn't apply the decal right on top of the hydro dip. I, it does have a layer of epoxy underneath. But I can show you now. So what you'll do is you'll just take a little bit of quick coat and if you don't have this, it's fine. You can use Rust-Oleum 2 times clear gloss spray and apply a thin layer. Let that layer dry. I let it dry for honestly about an hour. Um, and then I come back and I'll epoxy my layers as needed. I needed to sand this cup. I didn't put it all the way into the arm of the turner. So I got a little, a little lip at the bottom, but that's fine. I just sanded it down and then I came back and I finished it. And that was it, you guys. So this is one of them. This is the one that was space painted with spray paint only. It had no epoxy layers or anything. 
and I love how this turned out. Um, and then this was for a custom order. She wanted butterflies and then her daughter's name on it. I absolutely love this one. It's probably my favorite. I don't know if I said the other one was my favorite, but I lied. I think I love this one the most. And then the orange one that was also a, for one of my custom orders. I am not a fan of orange, so I was very scared about how this would turn out, but I actually really love it. I fell in love with it. I feel like every single one has its own unique touch to it. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear it. Or if you have any questions, just be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you guys all. Thank you so much for watching.